Hi everyone, my name is Beth Marshall and I've managed to create a way of generating test data on anything you like in OpenAI and plugging that data into an API workflow as test data. Um, I will happily show you how I did that and walk you through the specifics and I've made it as easy as I can do to share that with you so that you can um, try this out for yourself. Okay, let's take a look. The first thing you'll need to do is take a look in Postman and I've created a public um, workspace called AI Generated Test Data Flow. So if you just go ahead and search for that in Postman, you should find this here. Um, we can see here it's got two collections and two environments, so don't forget to fork those. Um, you will, in order to use the OpenAI data, you'll need your own API key and you can find that, um, how to do that in my uh, blog post on bethatester.com or you can also um, take a look uh, on the OpenAI page itself. Um, the key that I generate here today, if you happen to see that, I will be um, deleting that after this video and generating a new one. Um, I'm also using the RESTful Booker API, which is a fantastic um, API created and maintained by the wonderful Mark Wintringham. And that's just to show you how you can use data from two different um, APIs. They can be in two different collections if you wish. That's absolutely fine. You can do that in Postman Flows to get what you need. So once you've forked these and you've also forked the environments, and you've added in your own, and you've added your own data into the um, token variable. And for RESTful Booker, you've added that the host in there. We can go ahead and click on flows. So, how does that test generator work? Well, firstly, why would we need this? So, Postman has its own um, use utilizes the uh, Faker JS um, library in order to create random dynamic variables. So if you wish to, you can create things like random first name, random uh, Boolean, random whatever. There are tons and tons in there and they're fantastic. I use them all the time. But what if you need something that's a little more specific? Um, maybe you want a random first name, but from a particular subset of that data. Maybe you want to use celebrity names, maybe you want to use abbreviated names, maybe you want to use the most popular names from uh, Australia or, you know, the choice is yours and this is the power of leveraging a tool like OpenAI, you can ask it anything and hopefully it comes back with the data that you need. So if you go ahead and click on flows and open the OpenAI API test data generator, this is the flow which does this magic for you. I'm so excited about this. This took me a little while to work out um, because, you know, I'm not the world's most technically capable, amazing person. And um, I'm using version, uh, the latest version of Postman Flows as well. Um, so it's worth noting that um, I'm using 10.6 you have to apply uh, at the moment to get this because this has got the latest version of Postman Flows on there. Um, there is a blog post uh, written about how you can get access to that on request. So let's take a look what how this flow works. So if you're not familiar with Postman Flows, it's the low code um, kind of workflow uh, feature. And what we're doing here to walk you through, I'm just gonna um, zoom in a little bit so you can see. Okay, we are asking OpenAI, creating a question that we can ask OpenAI. And we're gonna look at popular, mm, we want to generate, we need a value to generate, we're gonna generate three, and we're gonna go for popular British first names and then we're going to make sure so this is a process of trial and error looking at the information that came back from my request and trying to tease out 
how to ask it in a way that would bring it back um, in such a way that I could then squish that and do do more things with that. So I've asked that for to be separated by commas with no additional text and also no question marks because it started to add random question marks into the mix. I've then used an evaluate block and I've done that by doing this add block function and selecting evaluate and I've then squished up all of these into a single string and output that as a prompt for our um, request. So send a request to OpenAI to create a completion. So complete this sentence or give me what I need. And it's then going to do that. If it fails to do that, it's going to send an error message to our console log so we can see um, what's gone wrong. Um, if you wanted to output that to something like Slack, you can use the Slack API to do that. Um, however, if this is successful, it will then trim any unwanted um, bits of formatting from the answer. And it's then going to split that out into a list. So it's changing that data into something that Postman can do something with. We then use this feature here to take that array we've created and then for the number of times that there's data in that array, we are going to repeat this for loop. Now, this is currently generating an error. I think this is because it doesn't think this is a list for some reason. However, it still works absolutely fine. There's no issue with it at all. So we're then going to send that loop request. And every time that runs, this is what we want it to do. So for us, we want to post a create booking request to that RESTful Booker um, pretend bed and breakfast platform. And we're going to select a variable of random first name. And we do that by inputting this item into um, this request as a variable. And we can see here from the request itself that has to be down as a variable or even a, it doesn't need to be a dynamic variable, it just has to be down there as a variable in order for that to be picked up as a variable by flows. So go ahead and do that. Um, you can plug and play whatever endpoint you wish here. You can ask it for whatever data you wish here, change the question that you're asking for. But let's take a look at this running. So what we'd expect to see is this initial request to OpenAI and then we'd expect to see a loop of three and if we drill down we should see that first name variable changes depending on what's come back from OpenAI. So let's take a look. Okay you can see those noodles and doodles working powering their way through so it looks like it's all worked okay. We have our post requests and then a few seconds later we have our results. So let's take a look at our OpenAI request. The response body includes John, David and James. So they are our popular British names. You might want to change that, we'll look at that in a moment. And then if we look at our subsequent posts that we've done in our loop, we can see here, the name that's been sent here is John, the first name in that list. The name that's been sent here is David, the second name. And this should be James. Yes, it is, James Brown. Um, so you can obviously run this for as many times as you wish. You can plug it into whatever variables you like to, but they were all uh, boys' names. So why don't we say popular British girls' first names? And let's take a look what happens now we've modified that. Okay, we are whirring and whirring and whirring. Let's zoom that out a little, you can see this working. And it takes just seconds once this is up to get this to do what you want. Not only generate the test data, but then push it out to, into a workflow to use it. Uh, 
Okay, so now we've asked it for girls' names and we have Emily, Lucy and Sophie. And then you don't need me to tell you what we can see here. Emily has been passed through as our variable. Kind of cool, huh? <laughs> um, I'm really excited about this because I think there's some cool ca test cases that I think um, this could be used for. I'm sure you've got tons and tons that you might like to use it for in your workflow testing. Um, I'd love to hear more about how you've done that and I look forward to seeing lots of forks of my um, nice public collection. I hope it helps you. Okay, take care everyone. Bye.